an African-American physician who trained in surgery. He was at Howard University in, in Washington. He moved to Columbia University and what was then called Presbyterian Hospital and got involved with Dr. John Scudder on blood preservation. The original types of transfusions were live transfusions. Sometimes the donor and the recipient were actually physically attached to each other. Obviously, that's not very practical if you want to scale that up to give many transfusions to many patients. And so this issue of, of storing blood was very important. Dr. Drew's major contribution in that setting was to be able to collect and store and deliver plasma in a high quality way. Blood as it circulates in the body has two major parts, cells and fluid. The liquid portion as it's circulating is called plasma. It's 99% water. And it contains proteins and sugars and lipids and coagulation factors. Now he had to go to school in Canada um, because the medical schools in the United States that would admit him wouldn't allow him to, to have practical training because he might you know, have to work on a white patient and they didn't think that the patients would be comfortable with that. And some of them weren't comfortable with that. When he finished his degree, you know, he had his idea of what he wanted to do, which was to study blood and, and develop a system for transfusions. And, you know, he had to fight his way into that postdoctoral program. He was the first African-American to enter that program and to get through that program. In his plight to study hematology and not having some of the best um, medical equipment and laboratories and things of that nature at his hands and having to work with what he had, he created a path for himself and a space for which other hematologists could follow in his footsteps and even improve upon what he initially started. Dr. Drews set the scientific standard by demonstrating that uh, a person's race did not have any effect on whether or not they could receive blood from other, other ethnicities. Cross is on the front line in the fight against COVID-19, using plasma as a lifeline, says Executive Medical Director Dr. Yvette Miller. Even in the first pandemic in 1918, the physicians and the medical people understood that if you take blood from somebody who has recovered, there has to be something in their blood that we can give to somebody else to help them recover. The key to extending the life of that blood was discovered by one of Dr. Miller's heroes, the very first medical director of the Red Cross. What led my father to go into medicine was the fact that his sister, Elsie, uh, died in the 1918 flu. And that loss, says Charlene Drew Jarvis, is what motivated the research of Dr. Charles Drew, the man who became the father of the nation's blood banking system. What he did was to discover how to store and preserve both whole red blood and plasma, that the plasma could be dried and then it could be reconstituted. In other words, separating that liquid yellow plasma from blood's oxygen-carrying red cells greatly improved the shelf life of both, from one week to nearly two months, making person-to-person -person transfusions almost obsolete. That was critically important because we were in the middle of the war and because we had soldiers who were dying abroad. They needed to have whole red blood, which of course could not be provided on the battlefield. Plasma was what was used. That war provided the demand. When World War II started in 1939, there was a request from Britain, could we assist in providing plasma? The American Red Cross then called on the expert, Dr. Drew, to initiate the Blood for Britain campaign, becoming its first medical director of blood services. Thousands of British lives were saved because of Drew and his revolutionary method. But in 1942, Drew left his post disputing another form of blood division, the Army and Navy's decision to segregate blood banks by race. 
he actually resigned in protest because he said there's no scientific basis on, on which to segregate blood, only separate blood according to blood type. Ernie Jarvis, Dr. Drew's grandson, is proud he stood by his principles, returning to Howard University to teach and serve. I think if you were to ask Dr. Drew what his greatest contribution was, it was to teach a generation of African-American physicians and surgeons. One of them was my father, Dr. Ross Miller. This is a tribute to Dr. Charles Drew, and there's a picture right here. You see the gentleman to his right behind his right shoulder. I is believe that man is, is my father. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, my father had confidence in your father's ability to change the world. Dr. Drew died in a car accident when Jarvis was eight years old. But this daughter, a brain scientist herself, says his commitment to being the best lives on. He held us all to a very high standard um, of excellence. What we understood from him is uh, that we could achieve, we should achieve, and we would achieve. What is his impact on modern medicine? His impact on modern medicine is, is almost immeasurable. It's monumental. And that process of separating red blood cells from plasma is what we are still using right now in this moment to support patients who are trying to recover. Our, our care for trauma patients has advanced uh, based upon the foundation that Dr. Drew established. Starting with the foundation of separating blood into red cells and plasma, research has gone on to further advance those storage capabilities of blood products. My name is Theodora Winter, and I'm a second year medical student at the Long School of Medicine. So for me, Black History Month is a time for me to remember all of the pioneers in medicine who have come before me. One of those, most notably, was Dr. Charles Drew, who was the first person to pioneer plasma uh, restoration. And he also was the first person to make a large scale blood donation bank in the United States. Just knowing that despite all of the odds and the trials and tribulations that he went through, he was able to make such an impact on medicine is really inspiring for me. And my only hope is that I can impact my community in hopefully more ways than one. So as a public health professional, I'm inspired by Dr. Drew's tenacity. And so in looking at a lot of the barriers that are um, sometimes in the way for people of color, for women of color, um, I'm inspired by his tenacity to just keep charging ahead, keep forging ahead, keep creating my own path and staying the course for what it is I want to do with my career.